What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be giving our feedback to the devs after our first three days of playing the PTR for Season 4 in Diablo 4. So as you can see here guys, we are over here on my forum post and this will not be the only forum post I make for the PTR. I plan on making an entire post related to druid balances once I'm able to actually complete all of the testing I'd like to do with a lot of the builds that I want to try out for Druid in the PTR. And I also plan on making a second generalized post at the end of the PTR, just in case there's anything else I discover, or if there's anything that you guys personally bring up to me that I think would be really interesting to add to the feedback posts. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing I want to cover here is some general changes. So the first thing I thought would be a good idea was to add icons similar to the Roman numeral icons you see on your greater affix gear when it drops to the items in your inventory. So it's actually easier for you to sort through your gear. The second thing I've been saying since the beginning of the game is to remove the cooldowns off of your horse. And more specifically, the sprint cooldown as well as the manual dismount slash mount cooldown that you have on your horse. I don't necessarily mind the cooldown you have on your horse when you get dismounted from taking damage. But honestly, after season two, I have no idea why we are still waiting for our horse's sprint cooldown. I wish we could just sprint across the map as much as we want and dismount and mount off our horse without any type of cooldown. I think that would be a really great idea and a small quality of life change that I think would be really welcomed by a lot of players. The next thing that I've noticed is that they have completely removed all stats. So personally, I love all stats. I actually would prefer to have all stats over a willpower roll and I play the druid. So that's why I mentioned willpower. So I would like for them to bring back all stats so we can have that as an affix roll on our gear pieces. The next thing I want to mention is decreasing the veiled crystal cost and or significantly increasing the Veiled Crystal drop rates. Now, this is something I ran into pretty early on when I was swapping aspects onto my gear pieces. Everything costs Veiled Crystals, and it is incredibly expensive to actually interact with some of the systems, especially the aspect systems. So I think this is going to be a big giant roadblock for a lot of players in the early game and definitely a pain point for a lot of people. So in my opinion, I really do hope that they drop the overall Veiled Crystal cost for everything across the board and also possibly increasing the quantity of our veiled crystal drops just to make this a lot less of an issue in the early game. And then lastly for general changes, give us the option to turn all rare gear drops into crafting materials for in-game content farming. And I think this would be a nice quality of life change, especially because we won't be actually looking for any of those rare gear drops now in season four. And this would actually help alleviate some of that burden created by all the systems that require you to use veiled crystals. The next thing I wanna cover is Hell Tides. And you see here I have in all caps, complete the blood harvest transformation. So if you've been playing the PTR, basically Hell Tides have just been turned into season two blood harvest events just much larger overall so in my opinion the developers should just stop tiptoeing their way to it and just fully commit to transforming hell tides into blood harvest events so the first thing i have here is revert the cinder drop rate nerf we have more enemies and more enemy encounters but less cinders and this is something i noticed really early on we're definitely getting a lot less cinder drops on average from enemy packs as well as interactable objects within the environment during your hell tide so revert that nerf I have no idea why you would want to add more mob density as well as give us more events, but then take away some of the cinder drops. And with this change, it would actually make it a lot easier to farm up your living still and give players an incentive to actually open up more chests than just living still chests. And I think a lot of players would really love this. And, you know, more cinders everywhere would always be a lot of fun. It would also increase the XP rate in hell tides as well. So I think this would be a great change for season four. Revert that cinder drop rate nerf. The next thing I wanna cover for hell tides is remove or significantly decrease the cinder loss penalty upon death. So there are a lot of new encounters that players will come in contact with and some of those enemies are actually quite tough until you get your character fully geared out and the potential for dying is quite high and I really don't think there's a necessity now with the way that hell tides currently work that we have this death penalty still in the game. So I would like them to either remove it or significantly decrease the cinder loss because currently you lose about 50% of your cinders every time you die, which is quite painful if you die a few times in the row or if you die right before you open up that living still chest. 
And then lastly, make cinders carry over to the next hell tides. So currently, if your timer runs out, you lose all of your cinders, and there really is no reason for that. So just make them carry over like they did for blood harvest events, and I think that would make players a lot happier and make hell tides a lot more fun to actually interact with. Now for the tempering system. So the very first thing I noticed in the tempering system is that there's a high potential for you to completely brick your items and God knows I would hate to have a triple greater affix roll on a piece of gear and completely brick that item and basically have to toss it in the trash. So the first thing I would change is allow players to retain the previous affix rolled if a new affix isn't better, a similar system to the occultist. So currently, if you temper, you actually have no choice but to lose the previous affix that you rolled. I think this is actually quite punishing and makes me kind of fearful to temper an item if I have an affix that I like, but maybe at a low value value. So give us that option to retain the affix that we have currently on it if we like it more than the one we roll the next time. And then the last one, give us more tempering attempts because of the potential to brick those in-game items. I like the fact that we get the two free attempts and then we have five more rolls after that, but I think they should probably increase that to maybe seven or eight rolls just because of that potential to completely break your item and you have to toss it right in the trash. Now for master working, and honestly, there isn't really much I would change with the system. I actually like it quite a lot. Even if it is a bit punishing, if you don't get those rolls that you need, I think it's fine because it is our in-game crafting system. So the only thing I would really change right here is making the master working crafting material conversion at the alchemist more efficient. As you can see here, I said, I feel like I'm testing my might in Mortal Kombat because I'm just smashing my A button on my controller. So give us an option to actually convert that material all at once and pull it into our inventory. I love the fact that you actually stack up all of the caches that you get from the conversion at the Alchemist, but have to rapidly tap a key or a button on your controller is kind of annoying, especially because you typically need to convert hundreds of these caches at once. So definitely make it more efficient for players and I think everyone would be happy with that. And then lastly for future PTRs, give us easier access to uniques and uber bosses. And I give a little explanation as to why. So I play a druid and after dozens of attempts at Duriel, as well as doing Varshan and the Galvanic Saint, I have yet to get a single helm drop from Duriel, including a Tempest Roar, which I need for pretty much almost all of the builds I want to try for my druid in the PTR. So I can't actually try those builds to give valuable feedback. And I haven't gotten an Insatiable Fury because I'd like to try a Pulverized build. And I haven't gotten a Mad Wolf's Glee from Varshan. So definitely I would like in the future that they would give us easier access to unique items as well as bossing materials. So that way we can actually test out all of the content we would like to. And we would be able to give you guys more valuable feedback, especially in terms of class balancing. But anyways, guys, that is my feedback after three days of playing the PTR. I've been having a blast and I absolutely love the majority of the changes that they made to the game so far. I also plan on making a complete Druid feedback post on the forums here, as well as a video covering all of the changes I would make to the skill tree and maybe some of the aspects as well. So do be on the lookout for that video. And as always, I would love you guys' feedback in the comment section. Let me know your opinions of all the different changes that have been made. What changes do you think they should revert? What changes do you like? What changes do you, you hope that they expand upon and make better? But anyways, guys, that's all for the video. I do plan on streaming later on today, so if you have any questions or you just want to stop by and look at some Druid gameplay for the PTR, go ahead and swing by the stream. I love to have conversations, and any questions you guys have, you can definitely post out there, and I will gladly answer them. But as always, I hope you guys are having a great day or a great night, depending on wherever you're from, and peace out, guys. I will see you in the next one.